In the next few slides, I'd like to explain in more detail some of these tags. And in order to do that, I'm going to bring up an existing SQC alarm. Uh, we're also going to, later on, build one from scratch. So, But let's take a look at this first, the, uh, the existing alarm. Every SQC alarm tag is going to have a source tag. Now that source tag is the calculated tag, the, uh, the, the results of the calculations of something like an X-bar chart that would have a, a simple average done of the samples and the sample size. Uh, for example, if I were to take a look at the test that we're going to do in a few minutes, here's a tag called stationary 5. Now that's the raw data tag. This tag right here, MySQC alarm dash source, that is the source tag of the tag called MySQC alarm. That's an SQC alarm tag. And it uses a sample size of two samples. As you can see, it's an X bar chart that's doing a simple average. So the source tag is an average of each two samples. And if you, we zoom in, you can see that in fact, you know, every time we get a couple of values in the raw data tag, we produce a source result. So this, in some circles, you'll hear this called the derived value. It's the calculated value that, uh, that we store so that, uh, so that we have a history of what those, you know, what those inputs were and what the calculated results were that went into the SQC calculation. Okay. If we take a look at our existing tag, you can see that it's a tag that's documented right here. It uses the naming convention, so my tag, my alarm tag is called MySQC alarm. This is called dash source. I have a couple of points to make about this. It can be simply the pi point if it's a chart of individuals, or it can be a totalizer point that is the aggregated results. As I said, the averages or the ranges, uh, depending on what type of SQC alarm it is. So it can be either just a simple uh, point that's uh, tracking the individual values after filtering that the chart of individuals uh, was using. Or it can be that totalized point. An important point to make about this is uh, you should, of course, have compression uh, turned off for the source tag because if it's not turned off, then in fact you may have alarms that are based on snapshot events that we end up not storing because of data compression. Now this is something that automatically happens when you use the wizard to create these tags, so that's not something you should have to worry about. These tags are the control limit and center line tags that are created automatically by the wizard. Uh, these tags can actually be any type of pi tag. Uh, when we create those using the wizard, then we can, in the alarm editor, or the alarm manager, we can change the control limits manually. But any application that can edit pi tags, any manual input application, or data link using putval, uh, can change these control limits for you. Now, we can also use, in addition to the tags that are specified or that are created for us by the wizard, we can specify any tags really. We can substitute different tags so we don't need to use the tags that are created automatically. You can get tags whose values come from the archive, performance equation tags, or even tags that come from our specification system, uh, pi process point, or excuse me, process point. So those values can come from just about anywhere. As I said, by default we do create these tags. But as you can see, I could easily go out and using tag search make reference to other tags that are existing that get their data from elsewhere. Okay. Now these different tags, of course, can be shared among different SQC alarms. So you don't need a separate set of control limits for each one. Uh, you'll notice, of course, the clients will reflect when the control limits have changed. So when you're looking at a client application, you can see if you change from one product to another and the control limits have changed and you've changed those control limits, then that will show up in the client. And of course, in addition to changing what the user sees, it's going to change the test patterns that are going on in the SQC alarm calculations. I'd like to remind you that if you are going to be doing manual calculation or manual editing of your control limits, 
then the best place to go to try to determine control limits is in the SQC add into process book where you can pick your pi tag that you're you're trying to alarm and do an SQC chart so you can find a period of time when you were doing you know well with that particular process value so that you end up with a, a chart that looks like this where not, there are no alarms and apparently you were making the product with enough consistency that um, you know that these control limits would represent when you've been making the best product you can and then you can double click on here on the title to see what the control limits are see with when you leave the control limits blank in the plugin then it will do the calculation for you so this is coming up with some control limits that I may choose to use as my initial control limits and center line for the real-time SQC calculation. The test status tag is a tag we use to store information about what was in alarm, all the different test patterns that were in alarm at a given point for an SQC alarm tag. So uh, now the reason we need this is because you'll notice that the alarm tag it only indicates the alarm with the highest priority. When you're looking at the history of the alarm tag, if it says outside uh, control, meaning beyond three standard deviations, you may not know that in fact not only was that in effect, but also there was a you know eight uh, eight values in a row trending up or down, which is a separate one of those Western Electric alarm types. So what we're doing, that would be called the, uh, the trend alarm type. So what we've done is using this bit masking, we're going to assign each one of these different tests. These are those eight different SQC alarm te tests, the Western Electric set, or the seven here, excuse me. And we're assigning each one a specific bit, and then using bit masking, of the integer that we generate in the test status tag, you can figure out exactly what the value or what was in alarm at any given point. Uh, so, for example, if I have something that was outside two sigma but also was trending, that would end up being a 33. And in this case, since it's a positive 33, it would be outside or would be above the center line. Yeah, the example here, outside two sigma, outside one sigma would be a 48 and we know that's above the center line. Now this is all documented fairly well uh, in the alarm manager documentation. For example, here's the test pattern described here, and here's a couple of examples. You know, for example, in this case, the, uh, the one I just used, outside two sigma and trend. If that comes in as a negative 33, well, we know it's 32 and one. That means it's outside two sigma and trend alarm are both in the in, in effect, but also since it's a negative number, that indicates that these alarms were on uh, or beneath the center line. Here is where you would find in the definition of my existing tag that alarm status tag. And notice it is optional. If you clear that, then we will not create that tag for you.